Welcome back, everybody, to the KC Sports Report. Michael Darcy, your host here as always. And I'm recording this video live from the Sports Radio 810 WHB Studios. And I'm going to give my thoughts on some of the recent training camp news that we've seen over the past couple days. Uh, because, quite frankly, I'm not sure if a lot of it's good. Uh, let's start off with the biggest story of the day. And that is uh, defensive lineman Charles Omenahu has been suspended by the NFL for the first six games of the 2023 season for violating the NFL's personal conduct policy. He will be permitted to return to the Chiefs roster on Friday, October 13th, following the team's week six game versus the Denver Broncos per Adam Schefter. Now, the reason that he got suspended by the NFL is because there was a report out that, you know, his girlfriend called the police claiming that Charles Omenahu pushed her to it, the ground during an argument. Uh, she complained about pain in her arm. Uh, the police say that there was no visible injuries and she declined medical treatment at the time of the report. So I'm not really sure, you know, what the legal ramifications of his actions or alleged actions are going to have on Charles Omenahu, but he's not going to be on this team for the first six weeks of the season which is really going to hurt. I mean, I don't want to take away from, you know, what he may or may not have done off the field. I'm not really here to, you know, give rationale behind that. I, I don't know if he did it or not. But I do think that as it stands right now and him getting suspended, it's going to greatly affect the Kansas City Chiefs and specifically the defensive line. And another guy that we're going to talk about later on in the video Chris Jones, you know, he might not be here. So it's like the Chiefs have so many question marks on that defensive line right now. And that is a big concern. You know, when the Chiefs did not bring back Frank Clark, a lot of people thought that Charles Omenahu was going to be that guy to kind of, you know, take over for Frank Clark and be more productive. Now you don't have him for the first six weeks of the season. And a great tweet from Jordan Foote at Footnoted on Twitter. Is it still called Twitter or is it X? I, I I don't even know what it is anymore, but uh, on X, Twitter, whatever you have it, uh, at Footnoted, he tweeted out that without Charles Omenahu factored in, the Chiefs' experience in the defensive end room is not that good. Mike Dana has the most snaps at 1,339. George Karloftis, the second-year guy, is in second with 730 snaps. Malik Herring, who's been getting a lot of snaps with the ones in training camp, he's got 88 snaps. Joshua Kando has 46 snaps. And then the three other guys on the list, Felix and Udike Uzama, BJ Thompson, and Truman Jones, they have no snaps. So this Chiefs defensive end room has absolutely nobody that has, you know, shown anything in this league. I guess you could say that Mike Dana has been solid and George Karloftis came on as of late last year. But without Charles Omenahu, I feel really worried about that group, and it sucks, but the Chiefs are just going to have to figure it out, and he's not going to be in the equation for the first six weeks of the season. So it's going to be really interesting to see what we get from guys like George Karloftis and Felix and UDK Uzama because Felix might have a lot of pressure on him right away because he might be starting right away now that Charles Amenahu is not going to play for the first six weeks of the season. So that is going to be a storyline to watch very closely to see who maybe progresses in camp and in the preseason games because you're going to have to find somebody else, you know, maybe outside of George Karloftis to play on the other edge. And uh, unfortunately, the guy that the Chiefs thought could do that week one is not going to be here for the first six games of the season. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about Seemingly the unending saga of Chris Jones, uh, quite frankly, I'm pretty sick of it, to be honest with you. When a player is trying to get his, get his paycheck, trying to get that bag, they say a lot of things, good and bad. Chris Jones has said a lot of things. He's been very active on Twitter, or X, if you want to call it that. And recently on his Instagram story, specifically a couple days ago... He posted a song from Kevin Gates with the lyrics, Guess All Good Things Must Come to an End. First of all, don't know why you'd listen to Kevin Gates, but that's neither here nor there. It's just very fascinating that, you know, we've come to that point in the offseason where we're starting to read the subliminal messages. We're starting to, you know, get into the weeds of things. And, you know, Chris Jones likes some stuff on Twitter like, you know, I'm so grateful that, you know, you could bend with the Chiefs, but, you know, all great things must come to an end kind of stuff. I'm paraphrasing. I don't remember. But the point is, the positivity of a uh, Chris Jones extension has really just kind of died down. I don't know a lot of Chiefs fans right now that are really, you know, sold on Chris Jones joining the team. 
I, I honestly think that what he posted on Instagram with the your song lyric, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Honestly, if I was a pro athlete, I would troll fans all the time. I would just post stuff that, you know, the fans are obviously going to read into it and overthink it. And if I'm Chris Jones, that's probably what I'm doing in this situation. But we know how contract negotiations have gone in the past. They haven't come to a deal yet. We're starting to get towards the middle slash end of training camp. At a certain point, if he doesn't show up, he's not going to show up. And I'm not super, super worried about him missing this season. But, you know, as time goes on, it does start to grow. Because if he's not here by the first preseason game... You know, even if he does report after that, you got to think about it. It's going to take him some time to get in football shape. And I don't expect that to happen in a week and a half. It it takes guys two, three, sometimes even a month to get back to playing, you know, the game at a high level. And Chris Jones, while he's probably been training all offseason long, you know, to get this big paycheck, he hasn't been in, you know, training camp. He hasn't been training with his teammates And I think that could be, you know, detrimental to his 2023 success. But quite frankly, I don't know what's going on. I have no insider information on if the Chiefs are close or, you know, what Chris Jones is looking for. I will say something that I thought was really funny and kind of unnecessary to mention. Uh, Diana Rossini of ESPN tweeted out that Chris Jones is looking for a, quote, big extension, end quote. And I quote tweeted it like, wow, what earth shattering news from Diana Rossini. Like, yeah, he's looking for big money. This is not something that, you know, is a big surprise. He wants to probably get paid like the best defensive tackle in football. Is he worth that? Yes. Are the Chiefs going to give him that? I don't know. Quite frankly, the more that time goes on, I think it's harder to see the Chiefs saying, you know what? Here's your money. But I think it's pretty obvious that if the Chiefs cannot extend Chris Jones, not only is he not going to report to Camper at all this season under this contract, he he wants that guaranteed long-term security of a giant paycheck. He's not reporting under this contract. I think that was actually one of the tweets that he liked. He's not reporting under this current contract, and I'm worried that the Chiefs are going to try to get cute with this situation and try to say, you know what, Chris, come back, you know, play into this season. We'll try to get you something done next season in the off season, right before training camp. And then they'll end up franchise tagging him. And then at that point, it's just completely done. But I have a hard time believing that Chris Jones is going to show up period unless he gets paid. And quite frankly, I don't blame him. He, he should get that bag and the chiefs should be paying him at this point, man, you can't be stingy over everybody. I understand not paying Tyreek Hill, but as Josh Fan and I discussed in the past, Chris Jones is not Tyreek Hill. This situation is not the same. You cannot treat them like the same player. Chris Jones, you know, his value and what he brings to this defense is more valuable than what Tyreek Hill brought to your offense. And, and that's how impactful Chris Jones is as a football player. And the Chiefs cannot mess around and let that guy walk out of their life. Like, the Chiefs have got to do everything in their power to give him what he wants. And at a certain point, it might not make financial sense. It might hinder you, you know, signing a couple guys in the future. But that's what Chris Jones is worth. Chris Jones is worth, you know, everything that you could pay him. He's worth that investment because he really does change the dynamic of your defense. And I don't want to live in a world where Chris Jones is not on this Chiefs defense. And, you know, earlier in the episode, I talked about how Chris Jones has been saying a lot of stuff this offseason. One of the things that he said right after they won the Super Bowl and kind of as they started getting into the contract negotiations, that he wants to be in Kansas City. He does not want to play for any other team. But even when I saw that tweet at the time, I didn't put much stock into it because at a certain point, guys, put yourself in Chris Jones' shoes. You are playing for a team. You've won two Super Bowl championships for this team, for this franchise, for this city. And then you have a chance to potentially make like a hundred and something million dollars from another team. And it's like over $10 million more than what your previous team offered you. You would be pretty stupid to not take that contract. And that's just what it is. So if I'm the Kansas City Chiefs and if I'm Brett Veach, I'm saying, hey, Chris, 
We need you. We want you. We appreciate you. We want to reward you for your many efforts to this community, to this city, and the franchise. Here's your bag. It's that simple. It's going to take a lot. Both sides are probably going to have to give a little bit. But guys, I, I'm not really sure where I am on this whole Chris Jones situation. I think the Chiefs have to pay him. I think they should pay him. But I just don't think or I don't know if they're going to pay him. So let me know down in the comments below uh, what you guys think of the Chris Jones situation. Do you think that the Chiefs and Jones come to a long-term agreement in the next couple weeks? Uh, I think there's a strong possibility. But... I do think that he will not report to training camp or play a single down unless he's on a new contract. And in addition to your Chris Jones thoughts, let me know down in the comments what you think of the Chiefs defensive end room. Are you confident? Do you like it? Um, it's going to be really interesting, guys. But uh, definitely let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, that's really all I got for this episode. More Chiefs content coming soon. Uh, check me out on my social media platforms, Instagram, KC underscore Sports Report, and Twitter slash X at KC Sports Report, and then the personal at the Michael Darcy. Until next time, guys, thank you for watching this video, and go Chiefs.